Are you concerned about conceiving because you've been diagnosed with endometriosis or you suspect that you might have endometriosis? Well, then I'm shooting this video especially for you, so keep watching! Hello lovelies and welcome to another one of my videos in which I'll be talking with you about endometriosis and conceiving naturally. Of all the questions I've been receiving in the last couple of weeks and months, endometriosis and shooting a video on that was definitely at the top of the list, right underneath PCOS. So you can imagine how prevalent apparently it is, so it was high time that I did a video on this topic as well. Let's dive straight into what you want to know, right? What is the effect of endometriosis on your fertility? Well, let's first talk about what endometriosis actually is because then it's way easier to understand what the effect is on your fertility. Endometriosis is when you have the cells of your uterine lining, your endometrial lining, and they become like chocolate cysts. So your uterus no longer looks like a nice and smooth little bed for a fertilized egg to land. No, it's kind of lumpy and bumpy. So you can imagine that a fertilized egg might find it difficult to implant. Another part of this condition could be that cells of your uterus are traveling somewhere else in your body, outside of the uterus. One of the most common places that you will find this can be in your fallopian tubes or on your ovaries but it can also show up on your bladder or on intestines. However, these cells have even been found on joints and in the nasal cavity. Oh my goodness, Dee is being so super cute right now. I need to take a picture and show you how she's staring at me from the bed. All right, back to this important topic. Now that you understand what endometriosis is, it's a lot easier to imagine what the effect would be on your fertility, right? First of all, as I said, if you've got these chocolate cysts in your uterus, then the endometrial lining is not gonna be nice and smooth and it's not gonna be as nourishing if you've got these chocolate cysts going on. So it's difficult possibly for a fertilized egg to implant properly. If the endometrial cells travel inside your fallopian tubes, then they can cause an obstruction for a fertilized egg to travel down. And because endometriosis is an inflammatory condition, the cells in the fallopian tubes can even cause scarring. So not just the endometrial cells are causing an obstruction, but also the scarring. The risk of this can even be an ectopic pregnancy. Women with endometriosis have a higher risk of an ectopic pregnancy because an egg might be fertilized, it tries to travel down, it's not able to, and then it implants into the wall of fallopian tube. The third way that endometriosis can impact your fertility is if the endometrial cells are in or on your ovaries and cause chocolate cysts there. That completely interferes with ovulation, as you can imagine. Also, if endometrial lining starts to build up in your fallopian tubes, the fallopian tube might not even be able to catch an egg that is released by your ovaries. So if you haven't been diagnosed with endometriosis yet, but you're wondering if you might be having it, then this is what you should be looking out for. Mostly pain. Can you imagine if you've got endometrial cells in other spots than your uterus, then that can cause pain. Because under the influence of estrogen, every month your endometrial lining starts to thicken. However, your endometrial lining shouldn't be in your fallopian tubes or on your ovaries or your bladder or your intestines. There's no space for it. It's not meant to be there. So once that starts to thicken, that can cause pain. This is why with endometriosis, you will often see that women suffer with a lot of pain right before their period and during their period as the cells are being shed and that causes irritation in all the wrong spots. But you might find that if you have endometriosis that you have abdominal pain your entire cycle and that it is maybe a little bit better after your period but that it gets worse right after that because estrogen starts to go up and under the influence of estrogen, the endometrial lining starts to thicken again. If you have endometriosis on or in your ovaries and around ovulation it can be really painful as well. Another thing you can be looking out for is should you be having endometriosis on or in your ovaries, then chances are you won't be ovulating at all or very infrequently. So if you chart your cycle, you'll be able to see if you are ovulating or not. I will have my free charting course linked in the description below as always if you haven't started charting yet. All this being said, it is possible for you to just have a lot of pain right before your period or during your period if you only have the endometriosis in your uterus itself. 
And you know what? Some women have endometriosis and they haven't got any symptoms at all. You can possibly see that if you have endometriosis on or in your ovaries, that your symptoms can look a lot like PCOS. So if you think you might have PCOS, definitely click on the card up here as well. I've recently done a video on PCOS and I've just started a series. So should you be interested in that, make sure to head on over to that video after this one as well. So of course, in order to heal, we want to know what causes endometriosis, right? Well, the general explanations of what causes endometriosis are either retrograde period. So that means that your period doesn't just come out of your vagina, but it goes back up to your fallopian tubes. The other thing is that it is thought that maybe cells in other areas of your body suddenly out of nowhere develop in, into endometrial cells or that endometrial cells travel through the blood vessels and lymphatic system to another location and then start to reproduce there or that it is caused by surgery. For example, if you have a C-section, that endometrial cells are spread to another location. Those are interesting things, but they don't really explain what is causing it, right? They just explain what's happening with the exception of the surgery, because it's very obvious what's happening there. What I find is that the three underlying causes of endometriosis are usually the following three. So yes, the first is definitely surgery. It's a mechanical situation. You've had your surgery and suddenly you have endometriosis. It makes a lot of sense that those cells have been spread to another location. The second one, however, is an autoimmune condition. It doesn't mean that you necessarily have a specific autoimmune disease, but you can have an autoimmune tendency. And this can also underlie your endometriosis because endometriosis is an inflammatory condition and that is usually what goes hand in hand with autoimmunity. And the third underlying cause for endometriosis that I see a lot is estrogen dominance. So now that doesn't mean necessarily that you have too much estrogen, it just means that you have too much estrogen in comparison to other hormones. So it's relative. Estrogen dominance happens anyway as we age. So we often see that endometriosis gets worse with age or it starts to develop with age. But I also see that long-term use of the contraceptive pill completely disrupts our hormonal cycle and can also lead to estrogen dominance. So now that we know what the underlying issues of endometriosis often are, it's a lot easier to look at treatment. If you go and see your doctor, they will probably have about three tools to help you with your endometriosis. The first would be anti-inflammatories. So these are to reduce the inflammation in your body so you don't suffer with so much pain. The second can be the contraceptive pill because it shuts down your entire hormonal system so you don't have the thickening and thinning of your endometrial lining which also causes the pain. And thirdly, what is often offered is surgery. So the endometrial cells might be removed from the locations where they shouldn't be or the endometrial lining of your uterus is lasered. Although these tools can give alleviation, they don't actually solve the underlying issues that I just talked about. Again, with the exception of surgery, because if surgery is what caused cells to be in the wrong spot, then you can just remove them and that should sort it, right? However, if you look at estrogen dominance or at the autoimmunity, then you need to tackle those things in a different way. Inside out, help your body heal, and deal with those issues. So let's talk about the estrogen dominance first. As I said, it doesn't mean that you have too much estrogen in your body. It's just in relation to progesterone and other hormones that it is too much. If you want to start lowering your estrogen dominance yourself, then the first thing you need to look at is stress. Because if you have a lot of stress in your life, then progesterone is going to be lower. So if you have estrogen and you're producing that, but then you don't produce enough progesterone to balance it out because of the stress, then you're going to be estrogen dominant, right? So definitely tackle the stress. It's the first thing to look at. Secondly, a really simple thing that I keep mentioning is just don't eat or drink any foods or drinks that have been prepared or stored in plastic containers. I recommend that you exchange all your plastic containers at home for glass ones and that you don't use the plastic stuff anymore and definitely don't heat up anything in it. Estrogen dominance is however something that I treat a lot homeopathically. One of the important things that I will do with women that struggle with estrogen dominance is look at whether they have a history of the contraceptive pill and detox that. I will make sure to link in a blog as well in the description below about why detoxing the pill is the number one detox that I apply in treatment. But as you can see, what I mentioned earlier that endometriosis is often treated by the pill, 
it may reduce symptoms temporarily, but it increases your hormone imbalance in the long run. So dealing with that contraceptive pill layer and addressing the estrogen dominance homeopathically is the best thing that I can recommend. The other thing that we need to do is treat the inflammation because if you have endometrial cells in the wrong spots or you've got the chocolate cyst on your ovaries or in your uterus, then that's gonna irritate and inflame. And that is what causes pain. By reducing the inflammatory state of your body, you're tackling the endometriosis twofold. First of all, you're reducing the pain that you've got from the endometriosis, but you're also removing soil for endometriosis because as I mentioned earlier, inflammation is definitely an underlying issue for endometriosis. Now, how can you reduce inflammation in your body? Well, again, stress is the first thing. If you have a lot of stress in your life and not a lot of rest, then that causes inflammation in your body. So make sure that you tackle that. What causes inflammation in your body or feeds it at least is also sugar, caffeine, that kind of stuff. And then what I also recommend is that you quit dairy because dairy also promotes inflammation. Sometimes you can get away with raw milk products like kefir or uh, raw organic milk, but that's not always easy to get your hands on, but you can experiment with that for sure. Supplement wise, what you can do to reduce inflammation in your body and deal with the pain is take extra magnesium. I advise my patients with endometriosis or that have severe menstrual pains to take 100 milligrams of magnesium four times a day during the period that they are in pain and that they take it with food. And then I also advise to take 100 milligram as a maintenance dose throughout your entire cycle. Now I already mentioned homeopathy and when it comes to endometriosis, I really recommend that you find a good homeopath that takes your entire case and finds an individualized remedy or individualized remedies to sort out your condition. Tackle the pain right now, but also remove the underlying issue. However, there's one remedy that I have to mention to you because it's easy to get. You can get it over the counter, you can order it online, and it has solved a lot of hormonal issues for women, uh, as well as menstrual pain and endometriosis, and it's called sepia. So if you struggle, you might as well give it a shot, right? I recommend to get sepia in the potency 200C and that you start taking it right before you expect your period. So maybe you can take it once a day before. And then when your period arrives and the pain gets really bad, then you can put a pill in a glass of water and take little sips throughout your entire day. Now, if you don't feel better from sepia, don't get discouraged. You probably need that individualized remedy. But I definitely think that since homeopathy is so cheap and easy to get when it comes to this remedy, I should mention it so that you can give it a shot. So those are the basics to what endometriosis is, how it affects your fertility, what the underlying issues are, and therefore how you should be treating it. However, there's so much more that we can say about endometriosis. So make sure to subscribe to this channel and watch out for new videos because I'm definitely gonna do more videos on the topic in the future. And if you want to watch more videos about hormone imbalance and how you can treat it naturally, then click on the playlist on your screen right now and as I said, if you haven't subscribed already, I would love for you to subscribe so that you can be notified the next time I upload new content on natural fertility and how to boost it, which is every Thursday. And in the meantime, see you in the next video. Bye.